Okay, we're on Math 2, Unit 9, Worksheet Number 4, Factoring Polynomials is what we are doing before. Okay, so same idea as last time, except we're take a look and see how do we get to x squared and minus third, negative 36. So the first part here, we can recognize that if I multiply an x times an x, I'm going to end up with an x squared most likely, right? Now to get to negative 36, I need to think about how I can get to negative 36 but I need to make sure I have nothing left over here because I start with x squared minus 36. So I know I can do a six times a six to get me 36. And if one of these is positive and if one of these is negative, I'll end up with a negative 36. And that will cause these squares to have a positive six x and a minus six x, which will then be eliminated. <laughs> So that's the idea here, what you're looking for. How can you make this work out? So I end up with x plus six times x minus six when I factor that one out, that eliminates it, okay? Same is over, true over here. Again, same idea, x squared. If I wanna get an x squared there and a 121 there and minus 121, I'm gonna put an x and an x to get the x squared, no problem. But I need a negative 121. So I think about my perfect squares, which is 11 times 11, gets me 121. And if I make one of those positive and one of those negative, then I'll end up with an 11x here, a negative 11x here, which those are gonna cancel each other out. So I'm gonna be okay. So as I write this out, I have x plus 11 times x minus 11 right there, right? Because no term in the middle. If there is a term in the middle like this one, now it gets a little more complicated, I think. Well, it depends on how, what you see. I know I need an x squared, so I'm gonna have an x and an x, no problem. Now, I have x squared and a 10, so if I put 10 down here, that's great, so I can multiply things. Now, the problem is, I could put a couple things here. I could put 10 and a one, that gets me to 10, but if I do 10 and one, I have to think about what lands in these boxes. This would land me with a 10x and a one x. When I combine these, what do I have? I could do 10 plus one is 11, right? 10 plus one equals 11. I could do 10 minus one, which equals nine. Those are great, except I need to come out with seven. That tells me that 10 and one are just not going to work. So I need to think about a different set of numbers that I can multiply together to get me to 10. So that's where you think about something like five and two. Five times two is 10, no problem there. Now. 5 times x would become a 5x, and x times 2 becomes a 2x. That's great, but now you need to figure out, well, what kind of x is it? It's a plus 7x, so these need to be both positive, which means I'm gonna have a plus 5 there, and a plus 5 there, and we're set. So we have x plus 5 and an x plus 2. Okay, so when you do these things, just keep in mind, it, it does take a little bit of kind of guess and check, knowing your factors and your math facts to be able to see things quickly. And I just tell you, the more you do it, the faster you'll get at it and the more you'll see it quickly. You really will. All right, let's look at number four real quick. Here again, we have x squared. We know we're gonna get x squared in the box there. We know we're gonna get a 20 down here. And then whatever we have in this has to combine to make a negative nine x. So let's do the x's first. We obviously have an x plus an x, no problem. To get to 20, I have a couple options here, right? I know I could do 20 times one, that could work there. I could do a 10 times two, and I can do a five times four, right? Those things all get me to 20. Now, when you just have just a regular x squared in front with no number, no coefficient, it's kind of nice to look at this and think, well, of these, which of these could I add or subtract together? to also end up with a nine. So in my case here, I'm gonna go with the five times four because I know I can combine five and four to get me to nine. So five and four get you to 20, no problem, but I need a negative nine X. So let's look at what these terms could be here with the positive or negative. If I do five X here and I do four times X here, that's great, but I need them to be a negative nine X. So I'm gonna have to combine them by adding so I need a negative five and a negative four. That's what I'm gonna need. Now I don't have that yet because I don't have a term there. But if I make this negative and I make this negative, now I have negative five times x, negative four times x, and we're good. But let's double check this term here. Negative five times negative four, it's gonna equal a positive 20, so we're gonna be all right. So 
Just takes a little bit more work there, but it is very doable, very possible, and that's what we get for number four. This is the method that you can use if you're not sure about how to get this figured out. But we're gonna move now into looking at the expressions without the boxes, but doing the same thing. Okay, so first of all, number five. We have a y squared and we have a six. So I know, what do I know? I know I'm gonna put a y and a y because y times y gets me y squared. How do I get to six? Six could be six times one, it could be three times two, those are things that it could be. And I know I wanna get myself to a five. So in this case here, I like, I could do six minus one gets you to five, and I can do three plus two gets me to five. So that's where I have to figure out what do I want to do, right? Both would work, but I also remember that I also have to ultimately end up with a plus six on the outside when I distribute, okay? This is kind of one where you can kind of guess and check and see what you can do. In this case, the right answer is gonna be three and two because if I keep it a plus three and a plus two, I know I can have two y and three y, which makes five y, that's good. And positive three times positive two is a positive six, so that's gonna be good there. The next thing I want you to do is to check your answer by multiplying, which means go ahead and multiply that out, right? So you get y squared plus two y plus three y plus six combined to make sure it's right and we're okay. All right, number seven. Same idea, here we have x and x, so that one's done, check. Now I got the 63. So 63 can be lots of things, but let's just go to what I know, nine times seven. I know nine times seven is 63, I also know that nine plus seven equals 16, which is what I need. I have a positive and a positive, so this is just a straightforward plus nine, plus seven, and we're all done, and we're set, okay? Number nine, factor each expression again. So here we go, we're gonna break this apart into two things. I know I have a Z and a Z, that takes that part. Now I have some negative numbers. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. I, it just seems to be able, all right? So we have a negative 18 right there. To get to 18, 18 can be 18 times one, it could be nine times two, it could be six times three, all those things work but I know I need to get those middle terms to come together to make a negative three. So when I look at what I can add or subtract, adding and subtracting eight and one, I can't get to three. Nine and two can't get to three. Six and three, I can get to three. So if I put a six there and a three there, I know I can get to three somehow. So I want a negative three, so I need to have the bigger number be negative. If this is negative six and this is positive three, I end up with a three Z and a negative 6z, which makes a negative 3z in total. That's what I'm after. But double check your last term. Is negative 6 times positive 3 equal to negative 18? Yes, it is. So we're okay right there. So that's going to work for us for number 9. Number 11. I'm going to break this apart into two things. We have the p, because just p squared. That's easy. <laughs> so last one of those nice ones there. And then we have a 35. But 35, again, I think about what multiplies to get 35. Right away, we know we have seven times five, and that's a nice one. Can I add and subtract seven and five to get 12? Sure I can. Seven plus five gets you to 12. Now notice, I need to combine those to get a negative 12, which means I need to have a negative seven and a negative five in order to combine those to get to 12, because I need to get to negative 12. But does it work? Sure it does. Negative seven times negative five also gives me the positive 35, so we're gonna be okay right there. All right, next one, number 13. We have the two terms. We have the y and the y, and here is a 50, negative 56 right there. 56 is eight times seven. I know I need to end up with a positive one. So if I have a positive eight minus seven, eight minus seven leaves me with a positive one, Checking the last terms, eight times negative five is still a negative 56. So that's gonna be just fine right there, okay? So that's that one right there. Let's flip it over to the back side and look at some more. Okay, we're gonna factor these expressions out. Again, these have no middle terms, so it's like we've had before. As long as I have something where I have a plus and a minus the same number, I'm gonna be all right. So the x's are there. What can I multiply together to get to 100? 
I can multiply 10 times 10. And if one is positive and one is negative, I'll have no middle term and we're gonna work out great. Over here, same idea. We have nine, which is three squared. I have negative 49, which is seven squared. So I can then just simply break that apart and make this 3m, 3m. And for this, we'll do a plus seven and a minus seven and we're okay. Number 19, same idea, bigger numbers. What is 100? 100 is 10 squared, so 10w and 10w. To get that negative 81, that's gonna be a plus nine and a minus nine. And so that goes away. Again, this just becomes, if I look at the outsides and insides, 10 times negative nine is a negative 90w, and the inside nine times 10 is a plus 90w, and those just go away. That's why that works the way it does. All right, so on this section, here's what we wanna do. First of all, they all have a two in them. So let's take a two out first and see what we have left. I'm gonna have to be left with the n squared plus six n plus five. Now I have something nicer to work with. So I'm gonna keep the two on the outside and now we're gonna factor this part in the middle. I have an n and an n and take it to five. Five is five times one and then five plus one gets me to my six. So we're gonna keep a five and a one and we're gonna add those together to get one, what I need to have. That's the idea. So first factor out what you can, and then you have something easier to work with. Here, I can factor five out of everything, no problem, and I can factor out an x as well. That leaves me with an x squared there. I've already took a five and an x out of there, so I have just an x left here. And over here, 30 divided by five is six, and that's all that's left there. So this becomes five x, and down over here, we have an x and an x. What gets me to six? Well, that could be six times one, three times two. That depends on how I, what you wanna do. I need to get down to one being left over. So I like the idea of doing, and it's positive one, three minus two. So let's do a plus three minus two, and we're set for that one right there. So factor out first, it works out great. Okay, number 27, air analysis. Describe and correct the air made in fact in the trinomial. Okay. Well, this guy did 2x squared minus 16, and then just said, oh, it's 2x plus four, 2x minus four. That works great for the negative 16 because that's a square. Works great for the x squared because it's a square, but two is not a perfect square, right? Two is not a perfect square. That's not gonna work. So it's just not gonna work there. So on this one, what I should have done is 2x squared minus 16. I should factor a two out first to leave me with x squared minus eight, right? And that's where I'm at, x squared minus eight. And that's all I can do. I can't do anything else with that because that's not a perfect square. So I can't factor it any further. And that's the idea there. All right, that's it. Have a great day. See you next time.